This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build an online presence and run your business. Bolivia is the second poorest country in South America, and it was the poorest before the crisis in Venezuela. Like any country's economic situation, Bolivia's economic struggles are complex and heavily debated, but it's relatively easy to identify at least one of the many reasons. It's geography. I'll jump right into its largest obstacle. Bolivia is landlocked. On average, landlocked countries experience 6% less economic growth than non-landlocked countries. There is not a single highly developed landlocked country as measured by the Human Development Index outside of Europe, which includes Bolivia. But Bolivia wasn't always landlocked. It lost its connection to the ocean to Chile as part of a war fought against them alongside Peru from 1879 to 1884. In 1904, a peace treaty was signed, which officially created the western boundary with Chile you see today. Bolivia has never fully accepted the loss of this territory. The country has 10 stars on its flag, 9 representing its 9 departments, and the 10th star representing the coastal territory that was lost. Bolivia also has a navy, which is a little odd for a landlocked country though they do quite a bit of patrolling on the country's rivers and Lake Titicaca, which Bolivia shares with Peru. Bolivia may have come close to becoming a coastal nation once again in 1975, when the Chilean government made a proposal to swap a narrow piece of land from the sea to the border of Bolivia that was on the Peru border. In exchange, they asked for the same amount of Bolivian territory. But there was an issue. The territory was taken from Peru in the same conflict that Bolivia's was taken, and according to the treaty signed after the war, Chile could not give former Peruvian territories to other nations without Peru's agreement. And the president of Peru at the time was opposed to the swap, but he made a new offer. He proposed that all three states govern the territory, but Chile didn't like the idea of a complicated shared sovereignty. For decades, there was little talk of a potential swap due to Chile refusing to take part. And so in 2013, Bolivia filed a suit with the International Court of Justice at The Hague and the Netherlands to try and force Chile to negotiate a swap. Bolivia's former president told judges at The Hague that the country's annual GDP growth would be 20% higher if it still had a route to international waters, and that gaining access to the sea would make a small difference to Chile, but it would transform the destiny of Bolivia. But Chile claimed that Bolivia was virtually a coastal nation already, because they had granted Bolivia duty-free port access and their own customs station and storage facilities on the Chilean coast. While Bolivia admitted this to be true, they argued that they still have to pay for transit to reach the port, and that their goods are subjected to unfair Chilean checks. Ultimately, the International Court of Justice ruled against forcing Chile to negotiate. In the last couple of years, a president and a presidential candidate have stated that they are open to re-establishing relations with Bolivia, so there is still hope that one day Bolivia can be a coastal country. Before I head into the country's next barrier, first, I want to share with you today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a simple-to-use website builder and hosting platform, but you can do more than build a professional-looking website. Squarespace has tons of tools to help you grow your business, such as email campaigns, they make it easy to collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. You start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo, and there are built-in analytics that measure the impact of every send. And Squarespace makes it easy for creators and educators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like classes, online courses, or newsletters. And when selling these products, you can accept PayPal, Apple Pay, Stripe, and Venmo, making sure you don't leave any potential customers behind. Head to squarespace.com slash geographygeek for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to Bolivia's struggles. Nearly half of Bolivia's land area is within the Andes Mountains, the tallest of which reach over 6,500 meters. Within the Andes is where the majority of Bolivia's 11.5 million people live. Its capital, La Paz, is the highest capital in the world, at 3,640 meters in elevation. This rugged landscape has contributed to the underdevelopment of Bolivia's transportation systems. The rough terrain makes the construction and maintenance of roads expensive, 
and if it's difficult for products and services to move throughout an area, it's difficult to grow an economy. One of these roads is nicknamed Death Road. Until 2006, this 60-kilometer road was the only road to connect La Paz to a small town of just 12,000. The 2,000 feet drop, 10 foot width, fog, and rock slides resulted in the deaths of nearly 300 drivers on this road every year until 1994. There is now an alternative route for the most dangerous section, but people are still occasionally killed. Despite the title of this video, Bolivia's geography actually isn't all bad. It just hasn't fully tapped into what could be beneficial to its economy. Bolivia is already a top 10 world producer of silver, tin, zinc, lead, boron, and tungsten. But it also has tons of mineral resources and reserves. Bolivia has the second largest natural gas reserves in South America and is top 10 in the world in lithium, iron, tin, lead, silver, copper, and zinc. And there is likely more that just hasn't been found. Much of Bolivia has been underexplored in geological terms. Bolivia also has a lot of unused arable land. According to Wikipedia, which used a source from 1991, only about 10% of Bolivia's arable land was being used. I couldn't find what seemed like a credible and up-to-date source, but if the Wikipedia page is accurate and the numbers are still similar to today, it means Bolivia has some room to grow its agriculture industry. But again, it's dependent on its roads, which is a big reason why the industry is underdeveloped to begin with. There is room to grow its tourism industry as well. Just to name a few natural features worth taking a visit to, the Valley of Souls, a densely packed forest of rock formations in the nation's capital. Uyuni Salt Flats, at 10,000 square kilometers, it's the largest salt flat in the world. And Laguna, Colorado, a red lake that is home to a near extinct species of flamingo. Bolivia has a long way to go, but its economy is actually improving. Between 2006 and 2014, GDP per capita doubled, and the extreme poverty rate declined from 38 to 18 percent. And in 2021, Bolivia had the second highest GDP growth in South America, at just over 6 percent. It will take time, but if the trends continue, the future is bright for Bolivia. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube members for supporting the channel, and thank you all for watching.